Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders like this guy in the digital infrastructure space. And we are coming to you live. That's right, Jeff. We are live we're streaming live. right now from Data Cloud USA in the Lone Star State of Austin, Texas. And let's get to this thought leader now. The only person that I have seen talking with more people at this show than me is you. Yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot. And this is live, you just said, so now I'm suddenly yeah. nervous. I was not nervous. Okay, good. No, no, there's no... no I'll be okay. No reason okay. to be nervous. So, uh, Jeff, so let me introduce you really quickly. Jeff Barber. Jeff is the Vice President of Global Data Center Sales at Bloom Energy. Welcome to JSA TV. Thank you, Dean. Good to be here. Always my favorite part of any show being on the JSA TV. You know what? Um, we're going to talk for a, an hour You're now. famous. I'm signing autographs <laughs> after this. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. You are, you are very, very famous, Jeff. Uh, speaking <laughs> of, so, okay. So I, I got a few questions we have to get to. Yeah. Um, so Bloom and Core Weave. Yes. What's going on there? A great partnership, not mm -hmm. only with Core Weave, but the developer is uh, Carissa, right? So Bloom recently announced along with Core Weave that we would be providing you know, primary baseload power to an AI data center. I think everyone knows what CoreWeave does by this time. Um, this is a, a grid connected. So imagine a situation where you have white space or you have a facility and shockingly, the, you know, the utility can't show up with all the power you need. What? Right. It happens. <laughs> it happens once, once in a while, once every generation. No. Um, so what Bloom does in that scenario, which is extremely simple for us, we simply supplement the grid. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are giving core weave additional electrons like i can't give you the exact capacity that's confidential but it's a significant amount of power mm -hmm. going into a facility where they they're able to light up additional data halls additional racks high density racks gpu workloads everything we're hearing about right now yeah. in the industry so yeah it's an excellent partnership core weave is a you know rocket ship of a of a growth company yeah um, as is as is bloom so we're we're really filling that gap with utility right now yeah, no, um, I, I believe it. I, I've heard a lot of uh, it's uh, supplementing the, mm -hmm. the uh, or, or contributing to the grid via numerous different methods is a big uh, topic of conversation uh, mm -hmm. today. And we cannot talk, have that conversation if we're, unless we're talking about kind of future forward technologies like AI. Right. So yep. um, so it is a part it is all part of the same conversation uh, in many cases. So uh, with regard to AI. Just what kind of uh, of stress strain is it putting on the uh, existing grid? Well, the existing <laughs> grid, you know, <laughs> massive amounts to the point where some utilities are not allowing these workloads. Right. Um, I would uh, add to not just the grid, but strain on obviously cool mechanical systems. Mm -hmm. How do you cool these things? Right. So these questions are being answered right now, and new products are coming out. Yeah. In the case of Bloom, we easily operate in in one of two modes. Right? We're either attached to the grid, supplementing with electrons. Mm -hmm. My electrons look no different than anyone else's electrons. They're just happy little electrons. <laughs> or Bloom can be completely what we call islanded or standalone mm -hmm. with no grid connection whatsoever. Mm -hmm. In that scenario, uh, Bloom is able to respond instantaneously to the natural oscillations of mm -hmm. GPU workloads, um, primarily machine learning at this point, eventually inference. How do we do that? We do that with ultra capacitors, super capacitors, batteries if needed. Um, so yeah, it's it's a an actually a, a better solution than the grid. Yeah. When it comes to AI type of workloads, right? The, the response is instantaneous from these ultra caps, which we have deployed for years in our microgrids. It just so happens that this is the perfect buffer, if you will, between the fuel cell and the building, mm -hmm. the, the workload, mm -hmm. and, and enable us to step in loads properly, instantaneously respond, quick charge, quick discharge. So with that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and understanding that the legacy infrastructure that we have in this country, um, um, we're, we're not going to rip it all down and, and build and, and build new infrastructure. So where do you see where do you see Bloom as it relates to kind of the future of any technological advance that's going to require more power? How is Bloom innovating and what is what is Bloom thinking about 10, 20 years from now? Yeah, great. Great question. So, first of all, a you know centralized grid has problems. Mm -hmm. it's, it's centralized. You need to distribute to new areas, transmission lines, which means permitting, entitlements. The country is building not even a fraction of a percentage yeah. of what we need to address the, the requirements. So microgrids, on-site power generation, 
is the way it will go. We would love for that to be Bloom, obviously, but yeah. there are renewables that we can integrate with wind and solar and perhaps SMRs mm -hmm. down the road. Um, I think quite a ways down the road, but down the road. So on-site power generation will absolutely be part of the mix and mm -hmm. probably a growing part of the mix to get around this transmission issue, mm -hmm. the utility issue. Where is Bloom heading? If you look at our history, since approximately 2008 to current, we've constantly improved densities of the system, mm -hmm. efficiency of the system, right? Today it's 60% compared to combustion and maybe the mid to high 30s. Mm -hmm. Bloom is converting 60% of those molecules to electrons is the way I like to mm -hmm. think about mm -hmm. it. When I first joined the company almost two years ago now, the number one objection was footprint. You take too much space. You take too much space. We worked on that. This yeah. Bloom is very responsive to these things. So now we're stacking them or we're du double stacking the cells. So we can get you 25 megawatts and 8,000 square feet as an example. It's a whole different story from where we were just a couple of years ago. We have yeah. some great engineers in the company, obviously. The interesting thing about what you just said to me is that you are you are not insulated from having to innovate in concert with the folks that you're serving. And if you can't do that, then those are the people who ultimately are gonna find themselves like being behind in the game. Constant, constant innovation. And we, we didn't even touch on the, the other side of the, the GPU question or machine learning question is, how the hell do you cool these things at a hundred kilowatt a rack? Right? Yeah. Well, well, Bloom can actually capture the heat that we're generating from our system, put that through heat yeah. exchangers, absorption chillers, contribute to the cooling capacity of the of the facility. Yeah. These are all examples of how we innovate constantly. Right. Mm -hmm. The fuel cell never changes. Right. That is a a constant manufacturing equation and effort that we've perfected. Mm -hmm. Now it's all the ancillary around the fuel cell, the heat capture the improvements in density, the improvements in efficiency, which we're constantly doing. So um, this this next question for me was a no-brainer as a as a thought leader. Uh -oh. uh, true, I mean we talk we throw uh -oh. the we, we throw the term thought leader around a little willy nilly from time to time. But but in this uh, especially but, if you're talking about me. That's no, like, <laughs> no, you're segueing better a, than I'm I could. A thought follower. Yeah. <laughs> me too. So but uh, I, I, with regard to thought leadership, uh, you recently spoke um, at Climate Week in NYC uh, with regard to uh, the creation of Net Zero News. Why don't we talk a little bit about about that. Yeah, that is, that's actually on the 24th. I will be speaking oh, okay, there. Thank you. Yeah. So I will be covering yeah. amongst many other topics. The question is still relevant. Many other topics. So if you reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, along with JSA and, and my team and myself, we do a great job of publishing a tremendous amount of content, uh -huh. whether it's one of these interviews, whether it's a white paper, whether it's what's next for Bloom, mm -hmm. things like the core mm -hmm. we release, what shows will we be at? How do you connect with us? It's very simple for us. It's a great vehicle. I think there's thousands of subscribers now to Net Zero News. So that's that will be covered on the 24th in New York. Absolutely. So then let's talk about that as far as um, education. Uh, Bloom, you've been educating the JSA team um, on, on, on Bloom and kind of these next generation uh, 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 solutions to, uh, to the grid and things like that. Talk to me about education as it relates to uh, an initiative at Bloom. It's... It's primarily my job. Technically, my title yeah. is sales. My title is sales. However, what I found when I first joined the company and even previous to when I was just interviewing is there were many misconceptions about what is Bloom, what is a fuel cell. I hear yeah. constantly as an example, this new technology. Fuel cells <laughs> were patented 150 years ago. Yeah. Bloom has perfected the manufacture of them, the economies of scale, um, you know, making them much, much greener from a, a, a materials perspective. Mm -hmm. No precious metals, obviously no combustion. So we spent a lot of time talking about that. Spent a lot of time talking about the fact that I'm not a battery, right? A lot of people thought Bloom was a battery. No, we're not a battery. We're, we're generating primary baseload power. Yeah. Now, if you add on to that education, how does the system work? I have to add on to that. How do we work for data centers, right? And again, back to my electrons are no different than anyone else's electrons. Many different ways to configure these, these Lego building blocks, to mm -hmm. stack them, move them aggregate the the electrons or don't aggregate the electrons the flexibility in the system it's the vast majority of my job is kind of getting that word out there as it, you know it, it's what makes you so good at, at, yeah. at this um jeff it's always a pleasure uh speaking yeah. to you and and frankly getting educated um by you so thank you very much for joining yeah. us today thank you very much thank you everyone you bet sure. and thank you viewers for watching jsa tv stay connected stay healthy and we'll see you soon